All right, what have you been up to? Me? Um, teaching. No, outside of that. Well, I also developed the Pokedex for the region. What do you know? Um, all of the Pokemon in the region? Does this mean you know about the turtle? Turtle? You mean Torkoal? You know I don't mean Torkoal! Ladies, gentlemen, and trainers of all ages, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have been out for just over three months now, and honestly, as much as we've all enjoyed playing the absolute hell out of them, I'd be lying if I said that we weren't all chomping at the bit for the possibility of DLC being released for the games. It's all but guaranteed that DLC will be happening, and we even have a pretty solid idea when it will be announced at this point too, but when it comes to what will actually be in it, that is a bit of a mystery, but a mystery with some hints out there for us to gobble up like little breadcrumbs to find the full loaf of bread at the end. Nothing in this video will be 100% confirmed, really. This is all just a bit of fun speculation between the things that we do know, the things that are in the game, and some information shared with the community by some, um, let's call them reputable information brokers. So without further ado, let's talk about what we know, what we think we know, and what we just sort of think may possibly be a thing when it comes to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. First up, and probably most importantly, Pokemon Day 2023 is next week on the 27th of February, and it is all but confirmed that this will be the event where they announce the DLC. We now even have the confirmed existence of a Pokemon present specifically on the 27th of February, which means no matter what, we will get some sort of Pokemon-based information at this event. We know for a fact that there will be some sort of DLC for this game, it's just impossible for there not to be with what they've said so far. We don't know if it will be one DLC or two DLCs, but we will guarantee he'd be learning more at this event, which could be quite massive. On a similar note, we know that patch 1.02 for Scarlet and Violet will be released extremely soon as well. We literally already have the official patch notes for it from Nintendo themselves. And while for the most part these notes are pretty tame, it doesn't really fix a lot of the greater optimization issues, there are a couple of things that I'd like to point out here though. First up, they are going to reduce Pokemon spawns in some areas to try and alleviate certain performance issues. This is sort of pretty not great, honestly. It's a band-aid rather than a proper fix, and it's gotta be pointed out, this will simply make hunting certain shiny Pokemon harder than it is currently because they won't be spawning as frequently in different areas. So if you have any particular shinies that you're after, it may be wise to go looking for them before this patch 1.02 hits, because it might just make shiny farming harder. That said, while there isn't an official release date for this patch by any means, the timing of it all sorts of lines up with the idea that patch 1.02 should happen right around Pokemon Day 2023 on February 27th. We know what the notes are, so it definitely isn't far off or they wouldn't have shared it with us, and Pokemon Day is a really big deal as far as new things happening. On top of this, part of the patch notes both says that there are some features not listed and that update contents are subject to change as well. So tie that together with it being on Pokemon Day and it's also entirely possible we will get some actual new content with the patch released on that day too, like some returning Pokemon of some sort. For example, Centro Leaks reminds us all that in 2020, they actually added Galarian Slowpoke in a similar update. Aside from this, we also just got news about a brand new 7-star Terra Raid event coming this weekend, running from the 24th and ending specifically on February 27th, and this time it is a Water-type Pikachu. This isn't quite as big of a deal as many of the 7-star raids have been, as Pikachu is obviously already in the game, you can already get yourself a Pikachu, but the 7-star raids have always given us some really nice rewards and been an interesting challenge to try and complete, so it should be fun nonetheless and quite rewarding to farm a little bit while it's here, and it's obviously good to know that it's coming. So now we all have that date of both the patch and DLC announcements covered, let's talk a little bit about what we can actually expect from said DLC. One major player in this is a theory known as the World Turtle. I like turtles. All right. Known figure in the community, Riddler Koo, released a slowly growing image over the course of three days, one image per day. It started with a hexagon, then the next day it turned into a hexagon with some lines coming out of it, then on the third day, it was a full-on turtle shell. Without context, this could seem quite random, but knowing that Koo generally has some reliably almost psychic levels of pre-knowledge on Pokemon games and expansions and such, then combining with the theory of the world turtle, everything is starting to add up. There is this specific page in the Scarlet and Violet books within the games themselves that depicts some kind of scaled creature with a giant crown on its back sitting on top of a globe, and there have been many comparisons made by members of the community between this image and the mythological concept of the world turtle or cosmic turtle, a creature that can literally hold up the world. Many people theorize that this Pokemon is essentially responsible for terrestrialization. After all, we solved the mystery of the paradox Pokemon as a concept in the main story of the game, but while we got a couple of clues about terrestrialization, 
situation, it was still left very open-ended, almost as if they wanted you to not find out until DLC was released, and it was a major part of the story of that, the Sly Devils. On a similar note, we've got this tweet from Pearl Enthusiast sharing some fan art of what this legendary god power level crystalline world turtle could look like, and specifically saying, I just wonder how the official design will hold up. The interesting part about this is considering this user's history, it's entirely possible, if not likely, that they actually know exactly what the third legendary Pokemon does look like already. Do they think we will be disappointed in comparison to this fan art? Are we on the right track with it being a turtle in the first place? What if we're all just completely wrong about everything that we've assumed so far? I think the first option is probably the most likely here though. They just think that the final design of this world turtle type creature will probably be very polarizing. Some people will love it, some people will hate it. Simple as that. Past this in the Scarlet and Violet books respectively, we have these pictures of potential Paradox Suicune and Verizian. There are even moves that are coded into the game that are not available in any sense to any Pokemon that's currently in the game that are considered to be placeholders for the signature moves of these two Pokemon, making them all but inevitable to be a part of DLC in a pretty major way. But what's interesting is we once again have Riddler Koo coming in to make people think a little bit harder. Back in literally October, before the game had even released, they were talking about the concept of Paradox Suicune, and they showed the four established shapes that Pokemon tend to take and said, which of these shapes would be correct for this Pokemon? Most people said the third option, quadruped, like a dog or a horse. And that lines up with the picture that we eventually got in the Scarlet and Violet book, right? Well, a couple of days ago, Koo went back to this and replied with the same image, but with a cross over the quadruped, specifically implying that both Paradox Suicune and Verizian would be a different shape than this. In fact, a different shape than they even are in the Scarlet and Violet books themselves. And that's extremely interesting. Could they be getting wings and flying around? Could they stand up on two legs like Fluttermane does as a paradox version of Volcarona? Do I dare breathe into this world the possibility that they would be a creepy-ass humanoid? I don't even want to touch that concept, really. But what I find extremely interesting about this is, again, they actually have this little bit of art in both the actual games themselves in the Scarlet and Violet books that apparently is incorrect. So what's interesting there is either Game Freak decided to change what they had originally gone with, or they wanted to throw us off. They wanted us to think it would be more tame just so they could surprise us with the ridiculous changes we're going to get with these Paradox Pokemon. Then we have a couple more things to go over here. The first one is sprites. Back in January at the San Diego Regional Championships stream, there was an accidental flash of a couple of Pokemon not currently in Scarlet and Violet, but shown with Generation 9 sprites, which at the time had some pretty interesting implications, the possibility that these specific Pokemon would be added into the games. But now that we've had a leak of literally every single Pokemon that has ever existed having a Generation 9 sprite, here it is. They all have one, here's the full spread. What this means is that there is no way of saying any one specific Pokemon is likely to make a return just because it has a Generation 9 sprite, because, well, now they all do. Literally all of them, which is crazy to see. It almost feels like the image is some kind of code, but no, it is just the sprites for genuinely everything. This doesn't really tell us anything specific to expect, so much as it rounds the playing field off again to say that anything is possible. Really, any Pokemon could come, and they have prepared for any eventuality in this case. Then finally today, we've got something interesting to talk about, which is unused interiors in the Scarlet and Violet world. Thanks to both Luchube and El Chico Eevee on Twitter, who found these originally, but there are a number of interior rooms that are fully designed, with varying levels of actual completion. I find this interesting myself, given how few interiors that there actually are in Scarlet and Violet as is compared to most Pokemon games, you can go inside very few buildings. And so the fact that these were originally planned begs a couple of questions. But I suppose it's also worth noting that this could be one of two things. This is either something that was originally going to be part of the base game and then they ran out of time or changed their mind, or it is work ahead of DLC. So it's entirely possible these rooms will still come into play at a later date. Hell, this room that they're running around in could be the home of Nimona's parents, for all we know. We genuinely know nothing for sure. For now, it's just a room that is nearly fully designed that never shows up in the actual game, which is just both weird and neat to actually see and find itself. And that does it for today, everyone. A nice little roundup of some of the final rumors being shared out there ahead of Pokemon Day next week, which will almost undoubtedly answer a lot of our questions, confirm some of our speculations, dash some of our stranger hopes, but all in all, the promised day is nearly upon us. Okay, I made that sound maybe a little bit too big. We're probably having DLC announced next week. It's exciting, okay? Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Boop, <laughs>
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.